university. Uh, today, I will introduce my study, the special spillover effects of transportation infrastructure on economic development in China. And it's divided four parts. The first part is introduction. Uh, the Rostov says that transportation infrastructure is the advanced capital of social and economic development, which plays an irreplaceable role in economic development with the continual strengthening of the transportation infrastructure investment in China. Its transportation infrastructure construction develops rapidly. The transportation network system is further, further improved. Previous studies on transportation infrastructure and economic development by scholars lacked special considerations. However, in reality, the planning and the construction of transportation infrastructure should not only be based on local economic development, but also have spillover effects on the surrounding areas. Therefore, this paper selects panel data of 31 provinces in China from 23 to 2019 to study the special spillover effects of transportation infrastructure on economic development. The second part and the data. Because the province's economic growth exists special dependence is the premise of the special spillover effect of transportation infrastructure on economic development. And the special what correlation is an essential feature of special dependence. So we use the Moran's I index to test the special odd correlation of GDP per capita. And the, um, this study use, you, uses the special econometric models to analyze the impact of transportation infrastructure on economic development in China and to measure the special spillover effects. Uh, the first one is the uh, special what regression model. Um, we can call it SAR model. Um, on, it just only includes the lag term of special dependent variable. And the um, second model is the uh, special array model. It's also called the SEM model, it only includes special spillover effects of independent variables. The third model is as special tubing model. Um, we can call it SDM model. Um, it include, includes both them, both of the SAR and SM. Um, this study, the war data are collected from the from China Statistical Yearbook of Science and Technology, China Statistical Yearbook, and the China Statistical Yearbook of Transportation. The war data, the, the following data are log, um, logarithmic. The economic development uh, um, can expressed by GDP per capita. It's the uh, independent variable. The de de dependent variable is uh, uh, the dependent variables are uh, investment uh, transportation infrastructure, the transportation network density, the passage turnover and the freight turnover. And uh, uh, another control variables is uh, labor force, education investment, government expenditure, trade openings, and uh, research and development investment. The next part is empirical results. The results of special or correlation test based on the agent space weight metrics. The results of Moran's I index is between 0 0.348 to uh, 0 0.394, showing an overall growth trend and strong 
and a strong spatial dependence, which fully shows that the economic development of 31 provinces in China ha has a significant correlation between the GDP per capita of China along 23 to 2019. The extermination results um, The, SE, the table shows the results of each variable in SAR, SEM, and SDM model according to the fitting results. The max, maximum value of log likelihood is um, 154.3963, and the minimum of Likelihood ratio and uh, and AI say and the minimum value is uh, uh, minus two hundred eighty four point seven nine. So, um, I should be adopted it in this study the special Dubin model. And the results are direct and indirect. We can uh, call it the special effects of the SDM model. We can see that uh, every variable have a significant special spillover effect on economic development in China. The spillover, the spillover effects of investment uh, and the research and the development are positive, while the others are negative. The last part is conclusion. The first point is the Morin's index has been significantly positive in 23 to 2019 and shows an overall upward trend, indicating that there is a positive significant spatial correlation between the economic development of 31 provinces in China. The second point is uh, different types of transport infrastructure has a dif different influence on economic development. But there is significant spillover effects to the provincial economic development and a significant positive spillover effect of fixed investment in transportation while operating mileage and the turnover of passage and freight significantly negative spillover effect. Nam namely, the improvement of the local transport infrastructure can cause our factors of production into other provinces. In turn, negative spillover effect will be generated and the economic gap between provinces will be enlarged. The last point, is the labor force, education, investment, and government expenditure will have significant negative spillover effects on economic development. Okay, and that's all. Thank you. Thanks for your attention. Thank you very much, Renjiao, for your very interesting and very good presentation. As my, as my uh, an example, I have divided my uh, Sorry, I have divided my presentation into five parts. First, introduction, second, literature review, third, research methods, fourth, results, and the last part is conclusion. Okay, for the first part, introduction. As you can see from, uh, from this figure, uh, 2011 to the 2019, the total number of domestic tourists is gradually increased trend, but for the uh, 2019, the growth rate of domestic tourism uh, was decreased because the COVID-19 outbreak in this year. Why I chose Fujian province? Why I chose Chenzhou city? Because Fujian is one of the uh, province with uh, with economic, fastest economic development in China. And Qianzhou is the city that generates highest GDP uh, compared to the other cities in the Fujian province. Okay, the objective of my 
study to identify the important selection criteria considered by Chinese tourists when choosing domestic destination before COVID-19 and after. The second part, literature review. About domestic tourists, the demand for tourism policy and marketing advice is increasing with the development of the tourism industry. About COVID-19, tourism is a fragile industry, so many of the factors hinder travel can have an impact on it. Most of the literature has focused on health and safety. The COVID-19 outbreak affected global tourism and traveler behavior. Continue, COVID-19 outbreak affects Chinese tourist behavior, such as Chinese tourists avoid going to destination with large pollutions, flows, and choose to travel to some minority destinations or take short trips. Okay, I would like to emphasize this slide. This slide describes the attributes that factors affecting destination selection. As you can see in the following, there are many uh, articles to describe the factors, such as factors affecting the decision of the selection of foreign tourists for a tourism destination. A study in Da Nang City, Vietnam, factors affecting the selection of tour destination in Bangladesh and empirical analysis and so on. For the uh, sec, uh, third part is methodology. The population of this study are domestic tourists from Quanzhou province. Quanzhou has a permanent resident population of 8,740,000 people. However, the number of Quanzhou tourists visiting another province in China has no record. Therefore, the population in this study is unknown. Due to the population in this study is unknown, so I use the formula of Cochrane is the following, as you can see. Therefore, the sample size for this study was 384. For the sampling method, there are three modes at transportation, airport, railways, and bus. The equal distribute of each transportation is 100 respondents. During collections of questionnaire, the, the research used a convenient sampling, collecting questionnaire after tourists come back from destination. Okay, for the results, demographic characteristic of tourist, you can see the red font. It means that uh, it occupies most of the percentage in this study for gender, male, occupied 59% in this study. The age who are 21 to 30 years old occupied 31.8% in this study. Okay, for the marital status, the people who are married occupied 84.8% in this study. And for the education, the people who has graduate or vocational school the students occupied 51.5% in this study. About occupation, the people who work at uh, the government who, uh, occupied 21.8% in this uh, study, and the people who has under 50,000 RMB and new personal income, it occupies about 22.5% in this study. Okay, I would like to emphasize this result uh, that test for six factors differences before and after COVID-19. Firstly, I want to talk about the six factors. In this slide, there are three factors. And in the other two slides, uh, there are other three factors you can, that you can see. Let me come back. Okay, from this table, we can see before COVID, after COVID, mean oh as the p-value. Yeah, two minutes to conclude, Okay, the p-value, it means uh, the, uh, less than 0 0.01. It means the before COVID-19 and after COVID-19 has differences uh, significant. 
and uh, the red bond that you can see, it means the mean of before COVID-19 is larger than the after the mean of after COVID-19, such as unique architectural destination, delicious cultural and rich quality library, support tourist activities, and so on. Okay, next slide. You can see in the after COVID-19, the mean of after COVID-19 is larger than the mean of before COVID-19, such as contactless service at destination, free consolation service, alcohol and, and other immunization supplies at destination, and so on. It means that the tourists uh, pay more attention to the factors of after COVID-19 than before COVID-19. Okay, for the last part, conclusion. He tests for the six factors of influence Chinese tourists to choose domestic destinations before and after COVID. There are six factors are uh, uniqueness, activities and the tourist experience, social media and the promotion, infrastructure and the service, city and the friendliness and budget. This study focuses on exploring the factors of Chinese tourist choice of domestic travel destination before and after COVID. According to the survey and the research results, before COVID-19, the Chinese tourism more focused on the process of travel. However, after COVID-19, the Chinese tourist choice of destination factors focus on safety and hygiene. Facing the risk of the pandemic, Chinese tourists pay more attention to how to protect themselves during their travels. Okay, that's all. This is my presentation. Thank you for all listening. Do you have any questions? Yeah, thank you very much for your very wonderful presentation.